The interstate system overall was put together very well. It's one of the most impressive feats in American history. But nobody's perfect, and even the interstate system has some weird stuff going on. So today I'm going to talk about those things. The oddities and weird quirks about the interstate system. Because there's a lot of stuff going on that just seems fun and worth making a video about. Before we get into the oddities, though, I want to please ask if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. We're very new, so if you would help out and subscribe, I promise you won't regret it. So let's start out with I-69, an interstate currently consisting of 10 unconnected segments spanning from Detroit down to southern Texas. There's a lot going on with this interstate, because obviously it just isn't complete, and it just appears on random points along your journey. But that's not the most interesting part about it, because in southern Texas, the interstate decides to split into three separate interstates, all with the same I-69 name. There's I-69 West, I-69 East, and I-69 Central. One goes to Loretto, one goes to McAllen, and one goes to Brownsville. Why they did this instead of just making a spur route or a new interstate is unknown to me. But I would assume it's because all of these cities are in the same 100 to 300k population range, so one of them isn't way more important than the others. But while we're on the splitting interstates topic, let's talk about Dallas-Fort Worth and the Twin Cities, two metro areas with multiple large cities located in them. That also happen to both be on the route of I-35. Now, when building the interstates through a metro area with two large cities, basically nobody wanted to be less important than the other, meaning they don't want the spur route to be in their city and the main interstate to go through the other. So because the two cities couldn't compromise, I-35 just split into multiple interstates, I-35 West and I-35 East. This happens in both metro areas and is just a funny little quirk. Now we get to the worst of the interstate system, starting with Breezewood, Pennsylvania. So for this one, we're talking about I-70, specifically where it merges into I-76 to make its way through the mountains. The two interstates meet right in the small town of Breezewood. And let me just say, businesses are living it good. Because for whatever reason, I-70 goes straight under I-76 and into Breezewood, going straight into an intersection. Now, if you want to stay on the interstate like almost every other person, you have to go through 1,500 unbearable feet of commercial road, with intersections and businesses everywhere. And the worst part is, drivers have no choice but to go through this area. And bypassing it would be even more of a hassle. Because of this, the traffic on the road here is absolutely unbearable and has semi-trucks usually stretching the whole way because it's not meant for interstate traffic. Now I-70 doesn't stop there because 100 miles to the west, if you want to stay on I-70, you have to go through this mess of an interchange in New Stanton. It just feels overly confusing for no good reason at all, and even though it follows the rules, it's just annoying for no reason. Staying on the terrible interstates topic, next I have the two I-180s. Now I've made a video on both of these, but I'll give you a quick rundown. So the first one is in Cheyenne, Wyoming, where the interstate classified I I-180 is just not a freeway at all. It's one mile long and has multiple traffic lights for no reason. This one as a road isn't that bad, it's just that it's classified as an interstate even though it doesn't meet the requirements at all. The next one is I-180 in Illinois, stretching from I-80 to the small town of Hennepin. Now for this one, there's a whole history of government corruption that made it happen. Basically, there's a guy that lived down in Hennepin that really wanted the interstate to stretch down to the power plant there. So he basically asked the US government and they were like, yeah, sure, let's do it. But since the town is just not what it used to be, now the interstate is basically completely useless. And is in terrible condition. Now I've made videos on both of these so if you're interested go check them out. I go in depth on both of them and talk just a little bit more about like the details of it. Next I want to talk about I-175 and 375 in St. Petersburg, Florida. These are two one mile interstates that stretch from I-275 straight into downtown St. Petersburg and turn into normal roads. Why these two roads are considered spur routes confuse me because I feel like they seem just like normal interchanges and if they weren't considered highways at all it would work fine because they are just glorified interchanges. Also, for whatever reason, I-375 squiggles its way to downtown St. Petersburg, taking up more space in the process, while I-175 stays straight the whole way. I don't know, these two spur routes are just interesting and confusing as a whole. Next up is I-19, stretching from Tucson to the Mexican border. The interstate itself is perfectly normal and has nothing weird going on, but what puts it in this video are the road signs, which happen to be in kilometers instead of miles. Now, you would think it's because it's so close to Mexico and they use kilometers, and that probably went into it, but apparently at the time of building, there is a huge push to switch all interstates and road signs to kilometers, so they used I-19 as a test subject. Now this interstate was built in 1978, so obviously it didn't work, but they never switched I-19 back to miles, so it'll be forever stuck in the metric system. Next up is Hawaii's intrastate interstates. Now an interstate is defined very well just by its name, interstate. Because of how it works, you can't have an interstate that doesn't go interstate. And I know I'm saying interstate a lot, but I'm getting my point across that Hawaii is dumb, because they decided they wanted an interstate. 
So in the 1960s, four were built in Hawaii. Interstate H1, H2, H3, and H201. Now they tried writing a wrong by putting H in the name, but the official name is Interstate H1, not just H1. They are still making a mockery of our beautiful interstate system that has never made a mistake ever, as I have shown in this video. But that's going to be it. Please put more oddities and interesting quirks about the interstate system down in the comments below, and I'll check them out in a future video. Thanks for watching.